Hi everyone. Welcome to the Diva for Rhino video tutorials. This is Kara. And in this tutorial I'm going to go over running your basic uh, grid-based analysis, uh, in particular the daylight autonomy metric. Uh, to run the metrics you need to first uh, set up your model. And if you're just joining us then you can download a model or that uh, I'm going to be using in this tutorial from our website. You can go to divaforino.com and then go to the user guide here on the right side, getting started, setting up a Rhino model, and there's a link here to download the, uh, the Rhino model that we'll be using. Once you have that set up, you can follow one of the earlier video tutorials about setting up your model or follow the instruction user guide. And uh, you'll need to make sure to do all three of these steps. Um, in order to run the grid-based analysis, you need to have nodes created in your model, which you can see here, um, because the grid-based analysis depends on those nodes. So once you have it set up, uh, you can go ahead and click Metrics, and that will bring up this uh, dialog box. So at the top, again, we have Daylight Images, Daylight Grid-based, and Thermal Single Zone. And today we're going to be using the Daylight Grid Base. Under that we have four options, the Daylight Factor, Point in Time Illuminance, Climate Based, and Radiation Maps. And the one we're going to be running today is the Climate Based Metrics. These are annual metrics that use weather data in order to determine uh, the daylight conditions. Um, daylight Factor doesn't use a weather file, neither does Point in Time Illuminance. Um, and point in time illuminance, as the name says, is just a single point in time. It doesn't take an year into account. Um, and so really more and more people are turning to climate-based metrics uh, as the go-to metric uh, for determining daylighting performance in buildings. So we click on this one. So we can see um, the options that we have here. The first one is the metric. And if we look at the drop-down menu, we can see we have several choices here. Uh, we have daylight autonomy, continuous daylight autonomy, daylight availability, and useful daylight illuminance. These are all different types of climate-based metrics. Uh, daylight autonomy is the most basic. That's the one we're going to run in this tutorial. If you want to run all four metrics all at once, you can click the All button here or select this uh, all option. And the last two options are actually uh, for the CHIPS prerequisites and credits. Uh, CHIPS stands for uh, Collaborative for High Performance Schools and they're incentive programs for uh, designing um, uh, better schools. Uh, the NE is New England CHIPS and the MA is for Massachusetts. The, so with daylight autonomy selected, we can move on to the occupancy schedule. And you can see we have several options for the drop-down menu here. And this determines uh, you know, when you're going, your building has occupied hours. So this can vary, um, but typically you want to choose the 8 to 6 with daylight savings time at 60 minute intervals. Next we look at our target illuminance. So this is important because in order for daylight autonomy, the way daylight autonomy works is it basically says for an individual sensor point, how much of the time is that point getting a minimum level of illuminance or above. So what percentage of these occupied hours is this point or any other point receiving at least 300 lux in this case? And then it determines over the course of the year how, what percentage of the total uh, number of occupied hours is that sensor node reaching that level. So this determines the sort of uh, level of light that we would want to use. Because this is a classroom, we're going to leave this at 300. Um, the next option is units and we can pick between lux and foot candles. And then we, it asks whether we want to show the DASIM report. The DASIM report is an HTML web page basically that 
uh, shows up at the end of the simulation um, with valuable information about uh, your simulation and the results. So we'll leave that checked because we want to see that. Um, the next option is use DGP schedules and this you would use if you have run an annual glare simulation. Since we haven't done that yet, we're going to leave that unchecked. The next uh, option is the radiance parameters. And um, you can look on our website for more information about adjusting these to um, improve accuracy. An ABF2 is uh, fairly low. It's a AB stands for ambient bounces. And um, each of these elements controls a different uh, level of uh, accuracy within the simulation. For uh, a quick sort of demonstration, ABF2 is OK. Um, but for anything uh, in which you want uh, rely highly reliable or uh, accurate results, you'll want to increase this to 5 or more. For the adaptive visual comfort, um, we're going to leave it at the users cannot adapt. You can um, change this if, again, you've run uh, some of the DGP files. And the last thing is geometric density. Again, uh, this is most important when you have curved surfaces in your model or a lot of curved surfaces in your model. But the default is, uh, is the maximum anyway, which is on 100. So um, we'll just leave it uh, as is. OK, and the next step is just to run the simulation. And if you uh, get this um, box to pop up, this usually happens if you've run the uh, simulation once before. And it simply asks uh, whether it can reuse some of the information in order to make the simulation run faster. Now, if you're just rerunning a simulation with different um, settings, then you can click yes. But if you've changed any of the geometry, or you've changed the nodes or the materials, then you should select no. And in this case, I'm just going to select no. Now we can see the, uh, the window that uh, shows us that the simulation is running. You may notice it says, warning, no light source is found. This is um, simply indicating that there is no light source other than the sun in the uh, file. Um, and so um, we can, that's OK for us um, since we're just measuring the daylight. So. OK, now that the simulation is done running, uh, this load metrics dialog box pops up. And um, we know that we're running the daylight autonomy test, and it tells us where our results file is. Although we can, we'll always know that our results file is automatically stored in a results folder um, wherever our Rhino file is stored. So I have it, uh, my Rhino file in a models folder and a results folder is automatically created with several subfolders so I know that my results will automatically be stored there. We can pick a color scheme for our false color grid and we have several options here. We can label the 1% peak nodes. We can label all nodes with a text object um, that will say the value at each particular node there. Uh, if we had set our file to run in foot candles, this would automatically be checked. And we can also create a variant label uh, or a simulation description uh, if we want to write out a particular um, variant that we're um, trying to test out. And um, that will be added to the legend. OK. And so we'll click Load Simulation Data. And up pops uh, our day sim report. And we can see that the percentage of daylit area is 16% of the floor area. This means that 16% of the floor area uh, has a daylight autonomy of 50% or more at 300 lux. So 16% of our, only 16% of our floor area receives 300 lux or more during 50% of the year. This will also give us our mean daylight factor and uh, the total occupancy hours uh, for the year. There's some other helpful analysis here. 
at Aeon Youth. And um, so it's in generally, it's a helpful uh, file to have. If we look back at our Rhino file, uh, we can see that our false color grid has shown up. If we turn off our nodes and hide some of our geometry here, and view, uh, and set the view to top view. Scroll out a little bit. We can see our false color grid. And if we look, if we zoom out further, we can see the legend. And uh, this tells us what our mean daylight autonomy is, um, which is 16.81 of the occupied time. So if we average all of the daylight autonomy uh, values at each node across our entire grid, the average would be uh, 16.81. And that's it. We've run our first uh, grid-based climate analysis, daylight uh, autonomy analysis. And uh, you can take this and explore other uh, grid-based analysis from here. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.